Well, rather appropriately, this is uh, Loch Dewitch, and uh, I do it because of the flipping midges. It's not, not as bad as it was up on Sky, but still. Um, so, look at that. Look, um, absolutely wonderful scene. So I've driven past here uh, a couple of times, uh, actually heading up into the mountains up that way. And every time I've looked across here and thought, I better stop, I better stop. Uh, so I've found somewhere to, um, to park myself up. It's about an hour before sunset. It's a bit gray, but there's a gap in the cloud moving across. And I've just raced actually to try and get here as that gap in the cloud hopefully moves into the valley. Um, the tide is racing in as well. So uh, don't know if you can see, there's this fence runs here and, and then a wall. And it's absolutely pouring over the wall. It's just racing, racing, racing over the wall. Um, so I'm working on a composition, looking across this fence, over to this uh, mountain uh, and across the lock. And uh, I think it's a nice kind of coastal view. Um, so I, I'm, I'm kind of encompassing these rocks. So there's a, there's a collection of rocks here, which are nice um, with a, uh, a kind of a good covering of uh, seaweed. Uh, and then using that line, so uh, the, the, the fence and then the line curves round and hopefully points to this, this mountain, which I, I have to admit, I don't know what it's called, but um, I focused uh, just on um, kind of the first post here. I'm on F11 uh, uh, and I'm hoping that as that bit of gap in the cloud moves, the, the, the top of those peaks uh, is revealed. But I'm going to take, I think I'm a bit wonky actually, so bear with me while I straighten the camera. It's not, just want to get it straight um, so I was just looking across at the uh, far shore and it wasn't quite straight so I'm going to take a reading off um, uh, kind of the fence here which is quite dark uh, which gives me a kind of sixth of a second and then I'm going to take a reading the brightest bit of the sky is kind of above this valley so it's going to take a reading off of there, uh, and I'll combine those two. But there's winds picked up, which is blowing the midges away, which is great. Um, I think I'm also going to do a focus stacked image. So I'm going to do an image um, focus stacked so that I can get the seaweed in the foreground, the fence and the mountains in the distance. But hopefully when that clears over, so come back in a second. <laughs> it's got quite a bit darker since I last spoke to you, but um, not really an improvement. <laughs> so, yeah, the cloud, the gap that was in the cloud, kind of tempted me and headed that direction. And then wind must have changed, and it went over that way. So, yeah, you're looking back at my camera now; it's really grey. <laughs> um, but I'm persevering because I think it's actually. I'm going to take a kind of reading off the clouds up there. It's actually quite a kind of a moody kind of image. Um, there's, there's some nice shapes in the cloud. It's a lovely bank of cloud kind of falling over there. It, the cloud over there is much brighter than the cloud over here. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna persevere a bit. I'm still using this um, kind of foreground. The nice thing that's happened since we last spoke is, uh, ooh, <laughs> uh, is obviously the tide has, has come in more and uh, just raised some of that seaweed. So there's a kind of nice bit of foreground reflection off those clouds. Um, but I'm going to stay here. And uh, I'm not sure, there's some lights on and houses over there. It'd be quite nice if some more came on, just to add a little bit of kind of perspective. Um, uh, and maybe even there's a road uh, over that way. Uh, maybe even the odd car going past. But I don't think it's quite that dark yet. Um, but you never know. The, the, the cloud over this way is a little bit more broken. Um, I might even go for a really long shutter speed um, uh, and see if I can get some, get some movement. I might give that a try now and uh, see how it goes. Uh, it's gone too dark. Um, clouds seem to have got thicker, so I'm going to pack up. I took some, um, in fact, I just, I've just been taking one now, kind of 30 second uh, exposures, but don't think they're anything special. Um, so just one of those uh, evenings where things didn't quite work out. Um, I might um, 
on my way back home, just pop in to Ellen Donnan Castle um, on the far side. Uh, but that'll make sense um, if I do that. If I don't, uh, I'll see you next time. But uh, keep tuned because there might be a little bit from Alan Donnell in, uh, in, in a few seconds. Surprise! <laughs> well, I'm back. Um, castle turned out to be a complete bust uh, as I kind of got around that side of the lock. It just absolutely hammered it down. Uh, and when I got to the castle, it was just windscreen wipers were on the fastest as they can go. So it's two days later since I last spoke to you. <laughs> Uh, and I, but I've come back to the exact, exactly the same spot because I was quite taken with this scene. Um, and I'm, I'm just setting up. Uh, so I'm going to a couple of breaks in, this, in, the, in the cloud there. So I'm going to set up and then see if I can get something. I'm determined to get something from this spot. So uh, let's see how we get on. There's a bit more light. Um, so the cloud has shifted a bit. Uh, and there's a bit of blue sky over the valley. Uh, so you're getting a bit of better definition on this peak here uh, and again I, I'm, I, <laughs> well i have actually looked up the name of that peak but i won't attempt to pronounce it but i'll put the name in there or here or somewhere uh, and then you can have a go at pronouncing it yourself um, but there's a bit more light and, and uh, if we look down the lock so the sea is out that way uh, around the corner and the sun is setting over there and as the sun is going down there's a bit of light just coming through some of the broken clouds not direct lights but there's enough to come through and what it's doing it's illuminating a bit of the cloud up there which is reflecting on the water so um uh the, the kind of the, the water in the kind of mid ground is quite nicely illuminated and matching the sky so when i'm taking my image what i need to be conscious of or is the midges for a start just flap them about a bit um uh, it is the brightness in the sky and the water and then the darkness on the mountain and uh, this beautiful I love the kind of orangey yellow of, of this seaweed so what I'm doing uh, as I'm taking two images one exposing for the sky and the water which are about the same uh, light and then I'm taking a reading here on this yellow because although there's darkness in the rocks the yellow is quite kind of what I'm after I really want that to kind of bring out that yellow color so one exposure from the sky one exposure from here and then I can blend them together and I'm going to put my midge net on because the wind has dropped and they're, they're, they're biting uh, so I'll see you in a minute patience pays off uh, <laughs> so lovely bit of sun now just falling on that mountain um, which I'm sure I've put the name up you can uh, pronounce it yourself um, but look at that it's really kind of probably is the last glimpse of sun because it's going to be down uh, over those peaks very very shortly but look at that look 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 just perfect perfect hope you can pick that up sun is shining just on the flanks of that mountain turn it beautiful greens and yellow um, and uh, I'm no longer taking two uh, separate images because the, the balance of having the sun shining there the color of that mountain now quite closely matches um, this seaweed so I'm taking an image I'm on f11 it's giving me 15th of a second um, but I'm just going to nudge the exposure up a slight slight just one click um, to, to uh, account for that so some of the darkness over here but I think that is probably the best conditions that I've had in the, in the two occasions I've been here. And it's the sort of conditions I've seen when I've been up there, but heading in the other direction to Glen Elk. Uh, sorry, I've got, I'm going to take another one. <laughs> so I don't think it's going to get better than that. And look at the clouds, just the, the clouds lying along here. In fact, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is take that image. So it's hard to do, a, I'm going to do a panorama, but it's hard to do one-handed. Uh, and I'm just going to swing that round to try and get some of those clouds in. Because that'd be epic. That It's a lovely kind of float. It's almost like the clouds are floating on top of the mountain. But that, that really is probably... Just get the composition back again. That, um, that is probably the very last light of, uh, of the evening on the... So, pretty pleased that I... I hung around. I had considered packing in and uh, going because I thought the the clouds and the kind of the light was not going to 
play ball. So pretty pleased with that. So that will be the last um, probably bit of film from Scotland for, for now. Um, I'm sure I'll be back pretty soon. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I can't remember how many films I've made. Two or three, maybe four. Don't know. Anyway, um, but just a, a kind of a, 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 a final re re request. I'm going to be in Norway in a couple of months. Um, and I mentioned it in other films. If you know the area around Tromsø, um, kind of up, uh, kind of the far north of Norway or up in that neck of the woods, or if you live there uh, and you've got any tips, any recommendations for locations, I've already been in touch with a couple of people, but it'd be great to hear from you. So uh, either kind of drop it in the comments or send me a message because it'd be good to, uh, to find out more. I'll have a car uh, and I'll be out and about. So um, hopefully hear from you about that as well. And look at that. Look at that. Right. Might take a couple of more, but then uh, I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.